from the GTA, so why would someone, maybe someone watching today, come up here and experience the reserve? There are so many benefits. Um, you know, we all talk about unplugging, unwinding, getting out of the grind of every day to day. Uh, when you come here, you're surrounded by wildlife wilderness. There's a lot of places where your cell phone won't even work up here. Um, and I know sometimes that sounds scary, but I know a lot of the times that's, you know, a selling factor but you also get an experience, right? We're in a world of, of buying materialistic things, uh, but when you come up here as a family, you're doing something together. It's the memories that you make together that matter that everybody's gonna remember in the end. So my name's Ted. I uh, work here at the Halliburton Forest as a lead guide. Um, so in the wintertime, I'm going to primarily be dog sledding. And in the summertime, I run outdoor education and the canopy tour. Are most of the dogs here pure husky or are they mixed in with a couple other breeds? So most of our dogs are pure Siberian husky. Uh, though some of them are Alaskan huskies, which are mixed with greyhounds and German short-haired pointers. The Siberian Huskies' temperament and drive to pull is a perfect blend. Uh, they love people, they're beautiful dogs, and they're still very driven uh, to pull hard, and their cold weather endurance is unbeatable. So for someone who's never been dog sledding, why should they try it? What's so great about it? Uh, it's a once-in-a-lifetime experience to be able to stand and be pulled through a sled through gorgeous wilderness in the wintertime. It makes people speechless. I've been doing dog sledding for six years now, and that was after my second time running dogs. I decided that I loved it. And now you're working here. And now I'm still working here, yeah. Yeah. And then for people who may be concerned about the safety of these dogs, what do you do to ensure that they're healthy, happy, safe all the time? Health is their first. Um, you know, we have staff here that see them every day from 8 in the morning to 5 o'clock at night. You know, if we see any issues, we bring them into the vet right away. You know, a lot of us have been working with dogs for years and years and uh, know the signs. You know, for keeping them in shape, we do about two months of training before that they get on the sleds. Uh, so they're in very good shape before anybody ever comes onto a dog sled with them. So you just came off a half day tour. Are you freezing? Uh, no, it's actually really nice out today. It's very comfortable. Yeah. <laughs> what was your favorite part about the entire experience? Oh, just the weather and the dogs are amazing. Uh, you were out on the middle of the lake. You had a nice shadow and the dogs were just going and it was a lot of fun. Yeah. What was your favorite experience of the entire tour? Uh, the scenery. The mm -hmm. scenery is amazing. Yeah, the being on the lake. On the lake and the dogs, yeah. And would you guys come back again? Oh, definitely. Oh, yeah. I would take our kids here. It's awesome. Yeah. It's, it's really a great family yeah. activity, oh, right? Yeah, for sure. For yeah. sure. It was gorgeous. The, they do all the thinking, so it's good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> all you got to do is sit back and relax. So you just came off a half-day tour. How was that experience for you? Oh, it was awesome. It was so nice with the sun coming out in the morning. And yeah, it was really nice. What was your favorite part of the experience? Yeah, it was cool to see how fast they are, and then you actually have to run up the hills with them, so you're helping them out too, and yeah. So first we're going to talk to you, give you some instruction, uh, make sure that you feel comfortable and confident before you head out, but then you're going to get on a dog sled, and you're going to be working. So you're going to stand on the back of a dog sled, and you're going to be giving the commands, you're going to be using the brake, you're going to get on and off, and you are the musher. Um, and, and we do that in partners and in singles. Um, so we're going to go out on the trails, and at the end, you're going to get to go in and meet the dogs, pet them, cuddle with them, and thank you for an awesome job that they did today. See you guys soon! <laughs> We are here.
here with Paul Brown. Paul, can you tell us a little bit about what you do here at the Wolf Center? I am the coordinator for the Halliburton Forest Wolf Center. I have had the honor of working with the wolves here for now 25 years. That's a long time. Uh, a long time. So we average about 200 people a day in the summer, mm -hmm. seven days a week, and we're just educating people, dispelling a lot of the myths and legends and folklore about wolves. What are some common stereotypes about wolf packs? Uh, they'll run you down, chase you, eat you, um, Little Red Riding Hood, Three Little Pigs, the movie The Grey. Mm -hmm. um, it's just myths and legends, folklore, and then it just excels from that, you know, but to see a wolf in the wild, you, you'd you be very lucky due to the fact that they would smell you four miles coming and hear you six. Mm -hmm. So it's not like you're going to sneak up on them at all. No. If I was actually to take you out there, they would run away. So how do you keep the wolves in one space without them ex escaping into the wild? So here they actually have um, 15 acres, so it's 15 football fields, mm -hmm. uh, double fenced, and the fences are 14 feet high, uh, high tensile fencing, uh, design they can't dig out either, mm -hmm. so that usually keeps them quite contained um, and they're left alone so mm -hmm. that's a huge thing too um, people actually view them through one-way glass so that keeps them a lot calmer as well all right so if people can't actually make it down here mm -hmm. what other ways can they see the wolves they can actually uh, go online to the forest website and they can actually bring up the wolf webcams uh, and watch them right from their own home and then they can see whether they're out or hiding. Yep, and I always encourage people to, like depending on the weather or when in doubt you're not sure, call us. It's not an inconvenience. We'll let you know if they're out or not and how active they are. Because sometimes, you know, weather is a factor. can be an all-day experience. Is there a package plan that families can buy when they come visit? There's definitely lots of picking and choosing because depending on the age of the children, um, you know, the mobility of the group, what we find is folks come up and, um, you know, the, the younger adults with children go out dog sledding. The grandparents might wait at the cookhouse and have a hot chocolate and then they all go to the Wolf Centre together. So those kind of things aren't packaged necessarily as an all-inclusive price, but we like to think that everybody picks and chooses what they want to do. And for more information on all of that and everything that we do here in every season check out our website at halliburtonforest.com uh, follow us on social media instagram facebook uh, is where you'll find everything that's going on here.